it's also more deadly than your, you know, your even your strenuous flus. This is more deadly. This is five per, you know, this is 5% versus 1% and less than 1%. You know, so this is deadly stuff. He knew. That was the ex-president, author and reporter Bob Woodward in February of last year. Before all of us knew of the hundreds of thousands of deaths this country would endure from the coronavirus pandemic, 605,000 lives have been lost. That number, a growing tangible reminder of the early response of an ill-prepared president and his administration, outlined in a scathing new book, Nightmare Scenario, by two Washington Post journalists. They describe it as dysfunctional and led by the ex-president's rages and his, quote, quest for good news. The book draws on early conversations as told by staffers and government leaders like this one, when White House officials debated whether to bring infected Americans home. Quote, don't we have an island that we own? The president reportedly asked those assembled in the sit room in February 2020 before the U.S. outbreak would explode. Quote, what about Guantanamo? We import goods, Trump specified, lecturing his staff. We are not going to import a virus. And according to the Post, the authors write, quote, aides were stunned. And when Trump brought it up a second time, they quickly scuttled the idea, worried about a backlash over quarantining American tourists on the same Caribbean base where the U.S. holds terrorism suspects. Joining us now, MSNBC medical contributor Dr. Ving Gupta, a pulmonologist and global health policy expert, and Jonathan Lemire, White House reporter for the Associated Press and an MSNBC analyst. Jonathan Lemire, first to you, your reaction to this new reporting in this book. That's extraordinary, yet not all that surprising, even though the headlines seem almost implausible. We know at what great lengths uh, then-President Trump took to try to keep those cases down in the early days of the pandemic. He first floated the idea of keeping those cruise ships simply off coast, uh, not letting them dock in the United States, bemoaning the fact that when they did come uh, and those passengers were to touch down on American soil, the case numbers would go up. We heard him complain relentlessly all the way through his uh, alleged comeback rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma in the summer about the testing, saying they were testing too much, saying he wanted to slow down the testing because he was afraid of the perception that the virus was out of control. Well, here, the virus was out of control. Uh, and it certainly there was no question that early missteps uh, led to that conclusion. And this certainly wasn't the only time, Nicole, as you well know, that people around the president had to talk him out of some catastrophically bad ideas, had to throw their, their bodies in front of things that would be far worse. So certainly there were many missteps in the early days of the pandemic. But as this reporting indicates, and I'm sure we'll learn more as the months and years advance, there probably were even more uh, that were just narrowly avoided. You know, Ving Gupta, Jonathan Lemire is, is sort of inching at a phenomenon that we spent a lot of time covering here, you know, people that tried to stop him from doing catastrophic things. Whatever heroics they displayed, it wasn't enough. 600,000 people died because they did not prevail. I mean, they botched the testing. Here's what the new book has to say about testing. This is from the ex-president. Quote, testing is killing me, Trump reportedly exclaimed in a phone call to then HHS Secretary Alex Azar on March 18th, yelling so loudly that Azar's aides overheard every word. Quote, I'm going to lose the election because of testing. What idiot had the federal government do testing? Azar responds, quote, uh, do you mean Jared? Now, there may be the first time I've ever agreed with Trump on the I word, but you know, this idea that it was never about diagnosing, curing and protecting and containing a pandemic. It was only ever about his reelection. Well, good afternoon, Nicole. You know, what I'll say is this has to be the moment for all of us to clamor for a nonpartisan 9-11 style commission to investigate not just the root causes of the pandemic. I know we've unearthed that debate, but more importantly, the failures in the response, because this is not going to be the last time we deal with a respiratory pandemic. To your point, Nicole, number one, of course, the ex-president knew, and I think most glaringly, he knew that this was an airborne virus. As a, as a military member myself, that should have, that should have uh, alerted a five-alarm fire, something akin to what Pearl Harbor was doing right after they, got, they knew that they were about to get attacked. This was that same level of urgency. They had a warning, this was an airborne virus, nothing was done. We know that if something was done in February, Upon receipt of that knowledge, 80 percent of lives could have been saved from that point on until early May. That's number one. Number two, I'll just say there has to be in this era where Ron Johnson, where Tucker Carlson and others still go on and say that the vaccine kills people, that uh, it might magnetize you. We have to have this has to be the moment that we have a deterrence to medical misinformation. 
which was obviously given a lot of fodder and fertilization by the ex-president and his response. That has to be number one. The number two, we need a policy, we need policy playbooks and standards around pandemic response so that every four years, another president who doesn't believe in science doesn't decide that he's going to, he or she will throw that playbook out the window. We need to be ready. We need to have the personnel in place. So we had none of that in place uh, in 2018, a year well before the COVID uh, pandemic actually had, ended up being a, a major threat. You know, Jonathan, are any of those, there's a great Boston Globe series, Future Proofing the Presidency, sort of lessons learned from Donald Trump. Are any of those ideas under consideration by the Biden administration that Dr. Gupta just ticked off? I think, Nicole, there, there has been some discussion about looking backwards into sort of the origins of the coronavirus. We know, of course, that the minister, President Biden just in recent weeks uh, ordered intelligence agencies to deliver a report as to what happened in terms of the origin in China. But there's also been some talk about wanting to examine the missteps or the response uh, in here in the United States, the American response in those early days. Now. This would obviously be politically toxic, if, if though useful. And Biden and his team have been speaking in one voice in terms of like, look, we want to learn from this response so we can be better the next time. Suggesting there will, of course, be another pandemic someday. Hopefully not during this administration, but at some point, the nation needs to be ready, has a better response. Uh, let's remember that former President Trump and his team threw out the playbook that Barack Obama, President Obama and his team gave them. So there are some steps being put in place, but no firm decisions just yet.